Hi, I'm Dr. Zavi Kugler, a primary care physician and head of medical sciences at K-Health. And I'm Dr. Rani Lanber, head of AI research at K-Health. We want to share a bit about a clinical AI study we conducted in 2024. The study compared AI-driven clinical recommendations to physician decision-making at Cedar sinai Connect, a virtual clinic run by Cedar sinai As a practicing physician, I know firsthand how many variables go into even the simplest cases, not to mention the number of decisions doctors make on their own. From the start, I knew this was an important and fascinating problem to model. As an AI researcher, working with this unique data was incredibly exciting. A data so rich that combines actual patients' EMRs and nuanced symptoms is something that, to my knowledge, hasn't been employed in this way before. It's AI that is actually used in a clinical setting in order to improve the quality of care. To evaluate AI versus physician performance, expert adjudicators reviewed primary care visits involving a range of acute genitourinary, vaginal, respiratory, eye and dental chief complaints. Importantly, the study is based on real clinical cases not control exam vignettes. That distinction matters because real-world cases are unpredictable. They rely on patient-reported symptoms which don't always fit textbook definitions and can introduce a lot of noise and variability. Patients describe their symptoms through an AI-guided chat-based medical intake, with the medical records automatically synced. Before the virtual visit, physicians review the AI-generated diagnosis, treatment recommendation, and any suggested prescriptions, labs, or referrals. Then, during the video visit, doctors make the final clinical decision. Overall, expert adjudicators rated the AI's recommendations higher than physicians' decisions. To break that down a bit, in about two-thirds of cases, doctors made the exact same clinical decisions as the AI. In the remaining one-third, they found that the AI's recommendations superior twice as often as they were inferior. Just as importantly, the AI received only about half as many potentially harmful ratings compared to physicians. As a clinician, this actually makes a lot of sense. The AI is designed to follow medical guidelines much more strictly. It's never going to prescribe antibiotics for viral infection, for example. But what's even more impressive is how it can pick up on subtle details that doctors might sometimes miss. For instance, linking pain with eye movement, contact lens usage to indicate a potentially more severe infection, or considering previous treatment failure when suggesting UTI treatment. At the same time, doctors have a clear advantage in clarifying symptoms during the visit. So why did the AI perform so well? The main reason is that it's trained on a massive amount of high-quality, real-world clinical data, which is far beyond what any individual physician sees in their lifetime. But it's also about how the AI is built. Instead of making a single decision, it runs a series of expert discriminative models that calculate real probabilities for diagnosis and referrals. This is complemented by a treatment module that derives treatment plans from these probabilities based on the latest medical guidelines and protocols. Another key factor is that the AI does not guess. If it's not confident, it won't make a recommendation, which is what happened in about 20% of cases. And that's exactly what great doctors do. They don't force a diagnosis when they're unsure. The study is a real eye-opener. It shows how AI can significantly enhance clinical care. It's not just about making it more efficient. It highlights the AI's genuine potential to improve the quality of care while acting responsibly.